This is Terror House Radio with Matt Forney and Bryden Proctor. Yeah, welcome to it. Terror House Radio, episode number 17. I'm Matt Forney, your charming and loquacious host and the founder and editor-in-chief of Terror House Press. Joining me is my tall, handsome, and dark co-host and producer, Bryden Proctor. How you doing, Bryden? What up? I'm black. Fucking black. Well, I did say you. I did say you were dark. So I'm black. I'm black as shit. I'm bibbly. I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm black in the black, and I'm black, y'all. Remember, uh, uh, most deaf. Holy shit! I just because I was th- that is from uh the uh the Mau Mau crew from the movie Bamboozled, which is actually a really good movie, and uh. Yeah, I mean, like they hate white people in that movie. I mean, like that's what is it, Spike Lee or whatever. Um, but uh, uh, remember when I couldn't think of a Spike Lee movie? Yes. Yeah. No, Bamboozled. Bamboozled's good. It's got the uh, uh, Damon Wayans in it and shit. That's a good movie. It's got uh, was that uh, that that one Jewish fellow who thinks he's black that everybody is fucking rightfully wants to hit in the head. Um, what's his stupid name? Rappaport. I, the- Rappaport. Yeah, Rappaport. Um. Yeah, it's a good movie though. It's like all about uh, the history of blackface and shit. It's a really good movie. It's like it's a history of menstrual shows. It's 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 a really good movie. Um, I, you ought to watch it. You know, they hate white. Does it? Does it, but does, it have, does it have Al? Does it have Al Jolson, Jolson in it? Uh, I don't know. That would shock me if it if it's a movie about the history of blackface. It doesn't have the most famous blackface performer of all time. Well, Al, uh, oh, oh no 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 no. That guy, this is a, a newer movie. I mean, they, I know, I know. Like as a as a character, um, not as a character. No, it's it's um. So like, what it is? is Damon Wayans is uh basically a coon, right? He's like a you know, and he works for uh a a TV place or whatever, and they decide to start uh the modern day is Man Tan's Minstrel Show, and they get this uh like the uh, homeless people. They've got the older Wayans guy, and then this one guy with dreadlocks who can tap dance, and they're just homeless people. And they get them to uh you know like the whole pitch is like it's black, but in blackface, you know. And then they like go. Th- it's a funny movie, but then, you know you got like it, it's a good movie. Honestly, it's a really good movie. But it's got like uh, the Mau Mau crew. Um, which uh, has most deaf uh, leading it, which you know most deaf is great, and also committed a bunch of fucking like passport fraud or whatever. I think he might be in jail. Um, but Black Star is great. You know most deaf is fucking awesome. But um, I'm not gonna spoil the whole whole movie or anything like that. But uh, it uh, I, it's good, and it kind of goes through because like uh, Sloan is um, uh, is Damon Wayans' assistant. Who like basically like teaches people, you know, teaches the homeless dudes or whatever. It was like, look, like blackface is fucking shitty to do, and like here's the history of like you know all of that crap, and saying to Damon Wayans, basically he's a sellout and he's a coon, because uh you know he is like perpetuating this like menstrual show thing. I mean it goes into like uh the whole history of menstrual shows and stuff like that, and like how they were pretty shitty, um, you know. Uh, it's a good movie. I would check it out. I mean, it's pretty anti-white, but you know what Spike Lee movie is not. But it's uh, it's an entertaining Actually, movie. It's really entertaining. It's really funny. It's really dramatic. It's as low budget and cheesy as all of his movies are. But like, it's pretty good. I I, I like act, I like Bamboozled. That act, that actually sounds pretty interesting. I mean, uh, I don't know much about blackface specifically i do know about al jolson that's why i asked about it because uh the thing with al jolson is that he he saw performing in blackface as like a way of uh, of like honoring black people because he was jewish and like he saw all kinds of like parallels between how jews were treated and how black people were treated and putting on blackface was in his mind how he became sort of cool and like honored the struggles of of black people which is uh interesting when you talk about how you know the the thematic thrust of bamboozled and how it views blackface as in it sucks by the way blackface you blackface is funny but like you you shouldn't do that it's like saying the n-word it's funny but you shouldn't do it yeah it's rude it's very rude yeah it's It's a very elaborate form of rudeness yeah and i mean it's yeah i mean it's it's not a cool thing to do but it's super funny if you do it um but like you gotta have good intentions like if you're doing it to 
just be hateful. Like, it's rude. Like, if I drop an N-bomb right now, it's funny. But, like, if I was standing outside of a 7-Eleven and just shouting the N-word at people, like, that's what he's doing. You're an asshole. Don't do that. It's a rude thing to do. I remember, remember years ago that uh, my now ex's uh, sister was telling me about how uh, some friends of hers went to a blackface party. Uh, awesome. And now, by the way, these are all liberals. Like, she's a liberal. They're all liberals. They all went to this blackface party. They also, this okay, was- okay, real quick. Also, before you go into that, I just also want to say, if you are doing it insultingly uh, to somebody, that's also okay. Uh, Because it's like calling somebody an asshole because it's the worst thing you could call a guy. Uh, It's like in traffic or like if just, you know, one of them is being an asshole and you want to get under their skin. I mean, that's fine. But like you shouldn't do it's not even a I don't even think it's racist to drop an N-bomb as a, in an argument at uh, a black dude. You're just trying to find insults. You know, it's a it's a yeah, really yeah, rude yeah. one, but it's no different than calling somebody a fucking asshole, in my opinion. It's just yeah, very anyway, she specific. Was me, she was telling me about this blackface party, and I got the idea like next next uh, Halloween, I'm gonna go in blackface, and my best friend, uh, he's going to be wearing a KKK hood. Um, and I and 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 we're thinking this is either gonna be the best Halloween ever, or we're both gonna get fucking shot. Dude, 2009, because I lived in Chicago at the time. 2009 kicked ass. You could just do that. Yeah, I, this wasn't this wasn't 2009 though. It was two, it was 2015. Uh, you could still kind of get away with that in Chicago. Well, no, never in Chicago. Because I because I remember mentioning it to my uh, to my ex, and she was like, "No, don't do that. You're gonna get shot." And I'm like, uh, "That's why we should do it. It's gonna be fucking hilarious." <laughs> That's why we should do it. I'm I am not looking forward to 2020. I'm just. You should have done it, man. You should have just died in 2015 and like missed all of the miss me with that 2020 shit that's what i'm thinking plus well, you know what um in 2015 i was um 27 years old the um, magic age yeah that would have been good how old was i in 2015 uh, i'm 32 how old are you uh i'm 31 31 yeah so i'm the oldest guy in all of this i swear to god this is why i keep such fucking distance from everything it's like i'm like listen i'm old i'm i i am just i spend all of my days the past like week or so just like looking at penny stocks going like hmm i need to learn something because i can't learn anything anymore like what am i gonna learn a language i tried to learn turkish the other night on d live and like that language is is impossible you you can't learn that language. I've decided it's it's not even a language. You can't learn it. It's just you have to be born with it. I love my fucking Turks though, dude. I know you hate Turkey, but like they show up in the D live. I love them. Like I got fucking Turk friends now. It's sweet. I'm gonna be a Turkish guy. What do they do? Uh, you know, if you're having if you're having fun with it, I'm sure. I, I was gonna, I was gonna make the joke with regards to the 27 thing. You know, uh, Kurt Cobain blew his brains out. You know. Uh, Amy Winehouse drank herself to death. Um, I get, I, I die wearing blackface. That's the evolution of the Twenty Seven Club. I mean, that'd be good. But yeah, but, yeah. But with regards to the Turks, yeah, I mean, if you're having fun, I guess you know. I just, I have a bad taste in. Uh, nobody likes fucking Turks. No, no, Europe. I know that they're, they're, they're the N words of Europe. Well, that's why I'm like I'm, you know, I'm just a contrarian. I have no real fucking feelings about anything, unless I start drinking, and then I just trick myself into thinking I have feelings, and I feel them way too strongly. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just, I, I, I'm on the Turk side. I don't know politically what's going on over there, other than like I don't know Muslims or something. You know, I, I'm just. Well, I'm that's, on Last I heard anything about Turkey was that the government was begging people to give them money so that they could solve the uh, the pandemic. Oh, you remember that fake coup? That was Turkey, right? Yeah, that was yeah, that was four years ago. Yeah, holy shit! Yeah, I remember that fake coup over in Turkey. Well, it wasn't well, it wasn't fake. It was very real. It just got it was it just failed. Yeah, no, no, because the guy who runs Turkey or whatever is fucking uh, was it who runs that? Not Akmadjanad. Right? Who runs Turkey? Er, er, Erdogan. Erdogan, yeah. Erdogan. Uh, who? What does uh, Akhmadijan fucking run? Nothing. Iran. Well, Iran. He's, he, he used to be the president of Iran. He He's retired. He's dead now, now right? No, he's retired. COVID did he's still alive. Um, well, he's retired, so like he's 
presumably just staying at home. He's not like going to to all these parliamentary meetings where everyone got uh, coronavirus. So he's still alive. Eh, good for him. You know, uh, you run Iran, you retire. Good for you. It's the best thing you can hope for. I mean, I figure like if you take the job, it's like I'm going to run Iran. You basically got to sit there like Mossad's going to kill me eventually. But um, yeah, yeah, Erdogan. Um, he was like hold up and like uh, doing cell phone stuff, going like there is a coup or whatever. Uh, and it was like I remember what happened when I heard about it that morning. I was going to a Starbucks with a fucking buddy of mine, um, and we went over there, and there was some fucking Turkish guys literally talking about it behind it. I go, "What do you think of that?" And they go, "Oh, it's fake bullshit." They immediately go, "It's fake bullshit." Erdogan's bullshit. Ah, interesting. I mean, that's I've always been under the assumption that it was fake bullshit by Erdogan. That way, he could get more uh, rights, the three that they had left, taken away from him. Yeah, yeah, agglomerate power. All I remember about the Turkish coup is that when I was uh, when I heard about it, I was going to see a a performance of Swans. What is that? Just uh, like I mean, is that a play or like literal Swans? The band, the band Swans. I've never heard of them. Oh, they're they're all right. You know, they've got uh, they got they they were big in the eighties. Mainly, mainly in part because they're frontman. Like, if he if he saw like anyone, uh, if you put your fingers on the stage while he was perform- while, you, while he was performing, he'd step on them. Um, if he saw people head banging in the front row, he'd punch them out. Good. That sounds awesome. And he, he even straight like up cool said, "Like, dude. oh, he's a cool dude." Yeah, and he even straight up said, "Like, I hate fucking performing. I just do it to make a living. Uh, I want the audience to be as inobtrusive as possible, and if they act like assholes, yeah, I'm gonna punch you in the fucking face." That's. You know what? Fuck you. Honestly, if you're like, "Oh, I hate performing. I just do it." For... Yeah, meanwhile, everybody else has to go to the office. So fuck that guy. Um, I will never listen to his band. That guy sounds like a real piece of shit. Oh, yeah. And uh, at the performance, like, he, he had the AC shut off, so it was, like, 100 degrees. And that's something they do at the shows. Like, that was not the venue. Like, he, he intentionally shuts off either the heating or the air conditioning so everyone either freezes to death or sweats to death. That sounds pretty funny. Also, I'm not going to hate on a guy because it's fucking 2020 and we're doing dudes rock. So I'm not going to hate on any guy for the entire year. Doesn't matter what they do. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't forget that. Dudes rock 2020. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, any, any fucking hating on dudes is girl shit, and we don't do that. So that guy, good for him. I'm glad he fucking, you know, glad he did it. I'm sorry I, I had a misstep there. Um yeah, that was the that was the only thing I remember of the Turkish coup. Oh yeah, and, uh, earlier earlier that day, I also I had uh, good Chicago deep dish deep dish pizza for the first time. Oh, dude, I'm so pissed. Uh, the last time I was in Chicago, I didn't fucking uh, uh, and don't say why I was there. So, uh, but like, I forgot I didn't get any deep dish pizza. I had a vegan mozzarella sticks. He was there. He was there to he, he was there to meet a male escort. Yeah, I was having gay sex. But, like, I fucking, I, I had vegan mozzarella sticks, which I didn't know existed. But, like, I didn't get any deep dish pizza. I don't know why. It, well, I was high. It, well, well the, the, quality, the quality fucking varies. The best, the best uh, deep dish pizza I found is from the Village Inn pizza, Pizzeria in uh, Skokie. Because the thing with the deep dish pizza is, like, a lot of places, uh, they don't cook it all the way through. Sure. Because it's, like, huge. So it's like you don't want to eat like a half eaten, you know, with, with the with the dough half cooked. It's disgusting. I don't know, the man. I, I the... can get down on doughy pizza sometimes, though. No, no, no. Particularly if like, well, you're a vegetarian, so you don't got to worry about this shit. But if you're eating like a pe- half cooked pepperoni uh, uh, deep dish pizza, yeah, you're you're looking to eat coli, pal. So oh, yeah. I recommend Village Inn Pizzeria in Skokie. Wait, 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 Sk- wait, no, 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 no. Hold the fucking phone. Go back. You need to say sausage because uh, pepperoni's fucking cured, my, my my man. That's that's okay. already. Okay, sausage, yeah, sausage, meat, you know, any, any, any like, real raw meat. I just needed cool. to jump in there and sound really smart and remember, <laughs> listen, I might be vegetarian, but I, I know I know how pepperoni is, is prepared. prepared. I thought you were just going to, I thought you were jumping in to make a gay joke. Uh, yeah, you're a faggot. <laughs> I don't know, I, I, yeah, I was jumping in there like you jump into gay orgies, right? Because, you know, you're gay or whatever, <laughs> like you're gay. Got your ass, boom. 
But yeah, go go to the Village Inn Pizzeria in Skokie. And by the way, uh, the Skokie is connected to the uh, the L via the L line, so you don't even need a car to get out there. I think you just get to get to the uh, get to the one stop there, and you walk about four blocks, and there it is. Oh man, you know what I found out yesterday that I think is fucking insane. Uh, in New York, they just now were like, we're gonna start disinfecting the trains. That's not even true. They weren't disinfecting the trains. You know what they're doing? They're kicking the homeless people off of them. That's their idea of disinfection. Well, I I'm mean, not sure how you could. You've never been to New York, right? Right. No, no, no. I don't. I have no desire to be there, especially now. Did, well, well, I mean, now might be the most fun time because I could run through the streets and I'll be like, "It's not real. It's not real." <laughs> they would arrest. Well, here's me. The, the intrinsic problem with disinfecting the New York City subway is that the damn thing has not been cleaned in about a century. That's where you get all those mutant ra- mutant rats. That's where you get the fucking trash everywhere. Everything smells like urine. There's an inch of grime on everything, and it Matt, can't you can't get it off. That's not true. About once every six months, they have to clean a swastika off of something when the news says something about it. Oh, one swastika! Wow, <laughs> yeah. that's really that's that's really that's really gonna get rid of the rats. It might get rid. Well, the Nazi ones at least they'll look at that and go, "Well, not for us." I guess we'll go to the Nazi trains. Yeah, the the ones in New Jersey. Wait, how about Fivel goes? West? Okay, think about this. So you get uh, you get like Fivel, you know, uh, but it's like Nazi Fivel, right? I don't know where you got to help me fucking work this one out, but it's like you know. Uh, Fievel goes to West Germany, right? <laughs> Somewhere out there, on neath the sun in grass. Five Fievel goes back home. Fievel Fievel goes to the Reich. Fievel <laughs> goes to the Eagle's Nest. Uh, Here atop the Bergen Garden, <laughs> springtime. Spidal. Adolf and Eva, I'm glad to make your acquaintance. You just, you get Nazi fucking rats trying to fucking chase Fievel down. Uh, dude, I didn't know Fievel was Jewish, because um, I had only ever seen Fievel Goes West, and until I was like way into adult, and I was like, oh, fucking hell, yeah, Fievel, that's a fucking Jewish guy's name. Um, shit. Jewish dudes love cowboys. I don't know why they love cowboys so much. Like, I mean, honestly, Jewish guys, you can have them. All right? You can just have cowboys. It's fine. We're over that. Um, well, you should also think about the prog- pro- the problematic implication of a, a Jewish rat. Well, he's a mouse. He's not a rat. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. He's a mouse. Um, But, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Five, I mean, Five is fucking crazy, man. Um, but yeah, I'd only ever seen Five Goes West. I'd never seen the original one, which apparently is like pretty overtly Jewish if you think about the whole thing. Uh, Five Will Goes New York. I'd never seen either of them. Yeah, dude. Yeah, Five Goes West is great because he's like a fucking mouse cowboy, and who's gonna hate on a mouse cowboy? Why would you like? It's just adorable. It's great. They did it with uh, not Django. What's the one? What's the one where the lizard, the gecko, is a is a cowboy? And it's uh, Rango. Up. Rango, yeah, yeah, Rango, Rango. yeah. That's a great, mo- that's a great movie. Never seen it, but like, I'm a, I'm on board with it. If you just put cowboy hats on animals, I'll just fucking, I'll watch it. I'm okay with it, dude. You- dude, you should go, you should go see Rango. It's fucking, it's fucking great. I should go see Rango. Yeah, yeah. I go, should go, go see your, it. Go to, go to your living room and yeah. put on Netflix and 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 watch it. I should go see Rango. Yeah. Go go to your couch. Let me let me go watch this. Oh, let me go to my time machine, right? And then I'll go back to 2006 and then watch that movie. Yeah, for sure. Yes, yes, yes. Go go get in get in the time machine. I was thinking about how funny it would be. Um, I want to I, I want to invest in a time machine company because like you may not get anything right away, right? But the long term investment on that is probably you know, pretty good. The problem is there's probably too many insiders on that. (laughs) I I love time machine jokes. Like I bet I came up with this one when I was like 10. I'm sure many other people have is I'm going to build a time machine. Uh, I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to wait until I come back and tell me how to build it. 
Yeah, that was probably the first joke I ever wrote that wasn't Simpsons related when I was like fucking 10 years old. I'm sure tons of people. I'm sure losers have actually done that one on stage. I guarantee it. <laughs> I don't know. I chuckled a little. I mean, it's so hacky, but like how It's a joke how written by you... a 10 year old. It's a joke written by a 10 year old. You know, it's you shouldn't laugh. Also, you shouldn't laugh at anything ever. Nothing's funny anymore. Nothing's funny. I don't care. That's where you're wrong, my friend. What Lots is funny? Name so one funny. thing that's funny. Uh, the the collapse of society. That's funny. That's not funny. I mean, you gotta laugh at shit. You no, gotta, you gotta laugh at shit because otherwise you'll kill yourself. Well, that's the one thing that's like a very serious matter that everybody should take into consideration. Like all options come down to suicide at this point, and I think it's a good idea. You know, like nothing is fucking hilarious. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I'm laughing about like all these businesses trying to fucking stay, you know, afloat, and like that's not gonna happen. I can't wait until Amazon owns everything. But it was also hilarious. Amazon's earning report came out, and it was like they go for the umpteenth time since 1997. They go next time, next time. We're we're expanding. We're doing these other things. You know, Jeff Bezos is a, the richest man in the world because of investors. You know, it's not like it's yeah, and it's it's a profitable company. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like it's uh, he's he's not Warren Buffett as far as like being able to run a business. Um, he, he's no Bill Gates. Bill Gates is fucking something else, dude. I when did we decide Bill Gates was a doctor? That's what I want to know. Bill Gates is a fucking doctor. All of a sudden, he just snuck up on us. He was well, like, well, he well, made, well, he invented computers, uh, and then was like, I'm gonna bang some kids. And then now he's a doctor. That's pretty much all we know of Bill Gates. Let's 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 go back a step. Uh, when did we decide that Bill Gates was even relevant again? Like like he was a big he was a big deal in the '90s because of Microsoft. Then like in the aughts, he retired from Microsoft and they just vanished. And now all of a sudden, he's back. Well, because he's got to do something. Because, like, once he was done inventing the fucking microchip or whatever, uh, you know, he, like, he got, people were like, oh, fuck, he was on, like, Kid Sex Island. And uh, he was, now he's just like, you're all going to die of a virus. Like, I'm here to help you. I wasn't on that Kid Sex Island. I was doing research on that Kid Sex Island. You know, yeah, I was I, I I was I was researching uh, colon cancer. I was you know I was just being a doctor. Uh, I've decided that I'm a doctor. Also, what I think is funny, um, uh, Paul Allen, who's dead now, uh, was like, yeah, Bill Gates was a fucking faggot. That guy was an asshole. He was horrible to work with. <laughs> so like, Paul, yeah. Paul Allen's the other guy at Microsoft, right? Yeah, yeah, he co-founded Microsoft. He's fucking dead now. Um, he owned like, uh, ba uh, ba like a basketball team, a football team, or a baseball team. I don't know. He owned like a couple teams and shit. Paul Allen was like a you know pretty rich billionaire dude. Um, when, when, when did he when did he die? Oh, jeez, I don't know. Probably like 2015 or something like that. Probably oh, sooner okay. than that. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. He, but yeah, he was like a big billionaire guy. He was pretty uh, adamant about the fact that Bill Gates was a fucking sociopath <laughs> nobody talks about paul yeah. allen oh yeah i wonder wonder if it was it was it foul play or just old age no he i'm guessing died of cancer dude it. he got oh wow cancer. yeah he got the fucking cancer and then they they pfft, and he's gone yeah that's they're counting that as a COVID 19 death he was the first he was the very was first, the first person to die of uh coronavirus i can't wait for all the COVID 19 voters in november Coronavirus is so fucking deadly that, like, it went back in time and it is infecting people now. Well, it's going to make people vote Democrat, too. I can't wait for the, just, like, I don't know. There's some, there's some type of dumb, hacky joke there about, like, you know, dead people, the COVID-19 deaths being overreported and dead Democrat vote. I, it, it isn't. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't. Oh, yeah, shit. Did you see fucking, um, I know I sent it to you. Did you watch the, the full interview with uh, Biden? Uh, no, the Mika Biden. Oh, it was hard. The one, the one, the 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 one where he talks about Tara Reid. Yeah, 
Look, the only thing I know about that, because of the Larry King thing that came up, is I wholeheartedly believe two things. One, they should not be trotting Joe Biden out like that. And two, even if he did it, he doesn't, he honest to God doesn't remember. You know? Yeah, I was going to say, he's, he could legitimately deny uh, having done it because he doesn't remember anything. He he probably didn't even know, didn't even recognize the name Tara Reid until all this, this shit started up. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, I just, it's hard for me to watch Biden, you know, because I'm like, stop doing that to him. His legacy was secure, which is all a man wants, you know, in life is to be like, I was a great man, you know. Uh, and he was, you know, disagreed with his politics. Um, disagree with him probably just randomly putting his fingers up bitches cooches and stuff because that's rude but randomly putting his nose and little girl's hair yeah well I don't think that's a pedophile thing I, I think he literally is just that's what somebody told him is like that you should be more good with you know people relatable yeah really that's that's what relatable you know and he just overcorrected and he got older and it's like gotten worse. But uh, like, I don't think he's a pedo. I really don't. Unless he was on those, pl unless he was on the Epstein planes. I don't think he was a pedo. Uh, I think he's just like a fucking weird, shitty, sociopathic type of guy. Um, he's all right. But like his legacy was secure as like, okay, he was a senator forever. He became the vice president to the first black president of the United States. Legacy secure. Like, agree or disagree with his politics, he was a great man, you know? And then now, he's going to be the guy that he's gonna, Donald he's gonna Trump... Be remembered, he's going to be remembered as the guy who shit his pants on live television while rambling about malarkey. Yeah, and, and the, the guy that fucking Donald Trump just absolutely destroyed. Like, now he's just a piece of Donald Trump's legacy. And that's... <laughs> I think that's unfair. I think it's really shitty that they're doing that. Like, it's bad that they're doing that. You know, well, it's a McGovern. I've said from the beginning, it's a McGovern situation. How long have I been saying Biden's going to be the guy? Also, don't be surprised when Warren is the VP. Don't, when she's the VP pick, don't be surprised. Everybody else has been saying maybe it's Stacey Abrams, maybe or whatever. Nobody cares about Stacey Abrams. After this, Stacey Abrams will go the fuck away. I thoroughly believe it's going to be fucking Warren. And I've been saying it's going to be a Biden-Warren ticket forever. Well, you can't you can discount the possibility that, you know, Biden's just a stocking horse for Hillary Clinton. That's fucking, that's malarkey. You know, that's not going to fucking happen. It would be weird if they did that and she would instantly lose. You know, it's the only thing that they could do is Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama might be a fucking kill shot for Trump. But, you know, and let, let's not overstate um trump's like let's not assume that trump is going to win you know um this this coronavirus shit has in the long run hurt him you know he was doing great for a while and then now in the long run it has hurt him a lot um you know it, it this this might fucking end the guy um also how funny is it that like march or or, or whatever you know People were saying like, oh, yeah, it's just some big elaborate scheme to take out Donald Trump. And uh, I invite you to go back to early March on this show when uh, that's not what I said. But I said, you're not going to die from it. You are going to get it. And the economy is the only fucking thing that matters right here because it's bogus. We all know it's bogus. It's weird that we all know it's bogus. It's weird that Orange County right now is like screaming at the police. You know. It's weird that, you know, a couple days ago there were armed protesters at the Michigan State Capitol. Yeah. I mean, can I can I get a fucking attaboy and a pat on the back? I'll give you one as well. We've been fucking good on this. I like we can go back. I, I caught so much fucking bullshit and flack. Cuz I mean, it's just not it's just not fair. Everybody's going to act like that didn't fucking happen and you know. This is it was 9/11. It was the it was the next 9/11 bullshit where everybody wanted to fucking rape the Dixie chicks to death. And then, you know, later they're going to go, well, I wasn't really into that. You know, just fuck you. If you were like, just screaming about that, this, this fucking thing forever, you know, it's like you scared people, man. You scared the shit out of people. It's not cool to scare people. 
Yeah, now, now, and now look, look what the results are. Unemployment's like thirty percent. Right. A shit ton of, of small businesses are just gonna not are not coming back. Yeah. Um, we're probably. I, I'm not gonna say we're gonna be like straight up to Great Depression era. Because, no. You know, like here's the, here's the, yeah yeah like for example with regards to unemployment we have unemployment insurance now which we didn't have during the Great Depression. Okay, we have we have a social welfare structure uh, that can you know tie people over. But it's not good. It's not good for 20, 30 percent of people to be out of work for something that really just didn't have to happen. Well, I can't wait for those debates to, to be the thing um, in like August of like, did we have to do this? You know, and I mean, I'm sure the Trump team's already on top of it, you know, but like the thing is, the two presidential candidates like, did we have to do this? Both of them were saying we have to do this. So it's like that's not even a fucking issue. It's like. You look up yeah, there, like, and you're like, you're both idiots. It's like in 2004 when uh, the the big issue was the war in Iraq, and the Democrats nominated a guy who voted for the war in Iraq. Right. You or know. 2012 when the big issue was Obamacare, and the Republicans nominated the guy who created the prototype <laughs> for Obamacare. Right. Yeah. Weird. Weird how that happens. It's weird how we both uh, how we end up with both sides are just fucking assholes. You know, it's weird. It's weird how that fucking happens. You know, I don't know. Fucking surreal. Laura, Laura Loomer for president, dude. Like that would be okay. I think I think I can reluctantly get behind that. Oh, it'd be the best thing in the world. The internet would fucking be. You'd be able to say the n word on it like crazy. Don't criticize Jews she, though. She got she got to lose weight though if she wants to be president. Laura's cute. Leave her alone. No, she's not. Oh, she is. She's okay. She's no Gal Gadot, but for, you know, for one of the tribes, she looks fine. Leave her alone. She, she was she was cute before uh, she got all the, the surgery. Like she looked better with the big nose. The big nose was sexy. I, that that nose job didn't take. She looks about the same. All right, that nose job didn't take. But you know, listen, I'm not here talking about fucking you know future president. She also looked better. At, she, she, also, she also looked better as a blonde. I'll just leave yeah. it at that. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it was better with the blonde hair. I don't like the brown. I don't like the black hair. I don't get it. Yeah. But I don't know. We're not we're not doing a podcast on future President Laura Loomer. All right, and and not yet, not yet. Oh, dude, I I can't wait for her to be uh fucking president. Her and Matt Gates, like they they won't even do VP and and, and president. Let's do dual presidency. And who's then, Matt Gates? Matt, uh, he's a congressman out in Florida who like. Oh, oh, that guy. Yeah. I, for some reason, I was thinking like Gates, as in like like uh the the. The fence stuff instead of Gates. Oh, no, no. G A A T Z. Matt Gates is fucking consistently hilarious. Like that guy is just a fucking troll. Um, why does the left not have any good trolls? Like all they've gotten, like as far as their radical people, is like uh, Cortez was like, I think after this, uh, people should boycott work. Like what a fucking gay idea. Yeah. You know, you know why they don't have trolls, right? Because they canceled all the trolls. Oh, that's right. Being... They did. Yeah. Don't they hate yeah. they hate Chapo now? They hate Chapo Trap House now. Oh, Antifa, Antifa fucking canceled Chapo. Yeah. Chapo, whatever. Yeah, like I think it's fucking ridiculous. Like I don't like the Chapo guys. But yeah, well, I don't dislike him. I just I disagree with the Chapo guys. But I mean, I'm sure Matt Christman seems uh Christman seems like a fucking great guy to drink with, honestly. That guy gets hammered, but you know, well, it'd be hilarious to watch him stumble around on his gimp leg. I know. It's hilarious. I saw him at CPAC, and every time they walked by, I was like, hey, it's the Chapo guys. It was Chrisman, uh, Metker, uh, Will Metker, and then uh, Felix. Um, and I was just like, hey, it's the Chapo guy. And then one, like the third time I did that, Matt Chrisman goes, you're goddamn right. And it's like, oh, you secured yourself as the gayest guy ever. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> you're guess goddamn like right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm, I'm guessing Virgil Texas wasn't there. No, I actually like Virgil. He's smart. Um, he's a nerd, but like he actually knows numbers and shit because he's Asian. But uh, yeah, Vir Virgil, Virgil, and I've got we've we have a feud going back years. No, oh, you and Justin Cass. Um, he hates. Yeah, because he yeah he, before 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 Ch Chapa got started, and like he his his whole thing was trying to cancel people for being sexist. So like one day he just went after me. This was back in 2013. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know that whole thing. It helped my raise the frame, so I, I can't really hate him that much over it. Like he helped. He helped put my name on the map. So like Virgil, if you're listening to this, uh, you know the beer's on me. 
No hard feelings. I don't hate the fucking Chapo people, man. Like, uh, I, I hate their listeners, but, like, I, what, what are you going to do? You're going to hate fucking New York socialists? Great. You're going to hate, like, half of your fucking internet? I'm not, even, I'm, not even, I'm, not even, I'm not even really, like, uh, fu- fully understanding why they were canceled. Like, from what I understand, like, part of it was just their association with Cumtown and Red Scare. Yeah. And they, really, I, and they, really, and they really don't like that, uh, what's her face, Amber A. Lee Frost. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. I think she made jokes about trannies or something. Yeah, it's like she's like the least woke uh, member of the the Chapo crew. You know, she's also affiliated, like I said, Red Scares. You know, they they call people faggots. You know, Comtown obviously is uh is very not woke podcast. Yeah, but it's also not a political podcast. You know, it's just us comedians. Like, I I, I don't know. It just it's just New York people. I don't really keep up with the whole thing, but like it's it doesn't it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, what it is, is, like, um, it's weird how the left has their, like, the tankies type of thing. Like, they have their own wig nats, you know? Uh, they, it's it's just wild to me, like, how everybody has their own fucking embarrassing LARPers. Well, you know, it's, um, LARPing is, for some people, all they have left in life. Yeah, and that's I mean, look sad. at some of these fucking retards. Like, these, these, uh, these tankies. <laughs> Uh, my, my my favorite is the fucking uh, you know that you you've seen that picture right of the of the chick doing the uh, the hammer and sickle with a vibrator no not a vibrator <laughs> yeah. uh, a Hitachi, a Hitachi magic, magic wand yeah yeah with the trans flag oh the trans oh dude the trans flag uh, it was like I put a hammer and sickle on it with my blood and it's like oh it's totally period blood that's gross <laughs> that's that's just weird man like that's weird shit um. I don't. I think it's hilarious. Like, I, I just, you know, I, if that's what you want to do, like, I'm not against it. Like, go ahead. I think LARPing is great. Like, go ahead and LARP. The rest of us are gonna like get jobs and be, you know, people. But like, LARP, I don't give a shit. You know. Um, but it's weird when they get to the point where they're just like, you know, oh, I gotta like try to dox and ruin somebody's life for their LARP, and it's like, you're not edgy like nothing nothing bad uh can come from you being a shitty communist you know well i mean yeah i mean there was that one retard who's now like trying to dox people for violating like lockdown orders oh i love that exu exu anti fash gordon yeah yeah that's hilarious to me because it's like you know those are the types of people that'll call you a fucking bootlicker and then it's just they love the state all of a sudden which is like, I'm sorry, isn't Donald Trump in charge of the state? I thought he was a fascist. What are we What are we doing? Like, this COVID shit has flipped everything on its fucking head as far as, quit, like... Quit, 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 quit calling it COVID. It's coronavirus. I don't know. Chink flu? What do you want me to fucking call it? You know, I'm just... I, I, the COVID is like a name that was invented to... to no, it's it's like the, the PC version thing. of the name. Oh, it's the actual no, it's version the, it's, of it. No, it's the PC version. Okay, I'm sorry. Stop fucking word policing me, dickbag. I'll say whatever the fuck I want. How about I call it the fucking Matt Forney virus? You know? That's that's acceptable. Hey, you know why? You know why I call it that? Because it's a bunch of overinflated fake bullshit. <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> like, dude, like, I mean, just who gives a shit? The whole thing, like, it's just weird. Has, uh, uh, dude, speaking of which, it's weird how it's like, a cultural fucking event, right? Um, so Parks and Rec did that episode, and I knew it was going to be like this. I really hoped that they would have actually just done a reunion episode, but of course they didn't. It was just like essentially a Zoom. It was better than the SNL at home bullshit that they're trying to do, but like it was people on their fucking webcams. It was the whole cast on their webcams, and the whole premise of it was Leslie Nope uh, was like, calling you know all of the characters and stuff and they had conversations there was a couple good jokes in there but like it was overall bad you know um it didn't it didn't destroy the series like i thought it was going to but it it is a uh, uh a black mark on the fucking whole thing yeah so the obvious question from my perspective is like why how do you do a fucking uh reunion of a sitcom over zoom uh, because it was like, uh, they were just, it was, you know, here's the lockdown thing and they just 
she was chain calling all of these people or whatever. I mean, it's it's oh, okay. That that makes a bit more sense. Yeah, I mean, it was only like twenty one minutes. It it is, it is what it is. Um, it it, it could have been done way worse, but um, you know, it it still was like this is fucking laughable and not in a good way. Yeah, it's like you know, it's just it sucks. Um, I'm tired of the, the this whole thing being like some like we're all in this together fucking event. You know, uh, instead of like, oh, no, it's, every, it's every man for himself. Well, I mean, let's not be like that, but it, it just, it's like, yeah, again, it's very reminiscent of the post nine eleven shit, you know, and I, it, I, nobody knows what the fuck has happened yet. And we're about to, and Oh my fucking god! It's not going to be great. You, you know, you, you know it's coming, right? There's going to be there's going to be the COVID nineteen official memorial in New York City or wherever. Oh, you're right. Holy shit! They're going to fucking do that. There's going to be one in Seattle. There's going to be one probably in LA as well. Um, and it's just it, it's going to be even worse than nine eleven memorials. Um, I, I I know you haven't been to the one in uh, New York City. Have you been to the one in uh, Pennsylvania? Oh what, no! What what the? Fuck the one where, the the one where fl- yeah, the one where Flight ninety three went down. Oh, let's roll! No, no, I have not been there. <laughs> well, they well they're both they're both shitty. Uh, the the I've I've been to both. The one in Shanksville, uh, where Flight ninety three, uh, it is one of the worst national parks I've ever been to because they're letting the fucking grass take over the the sidewalks and shit. It consists of two buildings. This memorial. One of them was falling apart, like the fucking sign had fallen off. Hmm. Uh, you walk down like on the on the. Uh, what is the eleven memorial? <laughs> you you walk yeah yeah you walk down, you walk down the paths and like no one's run the weed whacker. They're all covered in grass and weeds. Uh, you get down to where uh, you know the uh, the the stone plaque memorial is with like the names of everyone who was on the flight, et cetera. Mm. You can't actually see where the plane went down. Like the, the government bought up all the land and only like relatives of the deceased can go see it. There's nothing down there, but our, you know, there's that little stone plaque and then there's the, uh, the boulder. Um, then you go, and, and I, and I read the plaque and it said like, they're, they're intentionally allowing the weeds to take over the, the paths because it's supposed to be a living memorial oh, that's part of me. nature which is which to me reads like you're just being cheap and lazy oh yeah cheap and true. lazy and i remember seeing the one in uh, in uh, manhattan uh years ago uh near where the the towers used to be uh you had to go through a uh a, a tsa strip search before entering it because you know some terrorists is good oh, definitely yeah. going to a bomb uh in what consists of a couple of empty pools and that's literally all it is it's a bunch of empty pools and then you go to the gift shop and it's all this propaganda about like oh america you know not a a a shop. no it didn't no it didn't they have a gift shop at the 9 11 memorial they have two gift shops god actually. bless the usa holy shit capitalism will prevail eat a dick commies that's fucking hilarious. That kicks ass. I'm so on war with that. They had two gift shops and a TSA checkpoint. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh, God. That's so stupid. <laughs> I should also add that the little museum, uh, the museum wasn't open when I went there years ago. There's a little museum in the memorial about uh, the attack. Uh, it looks like a gigantic block of metallic cheese. Oh, good, good. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Oh, how many people got paid so much money to fucking make that? That's oh yeah, yeah. It took ten years to more than ten years for this to be built. The oh. COVID nineteen memorial is going to be even worse. Oh, it'll dude. take like twenty years. It's going to be them like pushing up a flag, right? Uh, but it'll be them pushing up a test tube, and it'll be a bunch of nurses, and then it'll be like um you know, found the cure. And that's after, you know, they've like shoved microchips in our fucking noses and shit. No, 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 no. They're going to do a recreation of like the flag raising on Iwo Jima, but instead of the soldiers, it's going to be the ner- the nurses raising up the test tube flag. That's literally what I just fucking said. Uh, 
Was it? That's literally what I just fucking said. <laughs> I must have must have missed the reference. Oh my god. I can't get a fucking break. Nobody around me is good. That's <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. And you were so like you were so eager about it. It's literally it's literally word for word almost just literally word for word what I said. Oh my god, I just want to die. Jesus fucking shit. I mean, it's like that's incredible, dude. Oh my god. Yeah, great. Go on, go, go on. What what would you like to talk about now? Would would you like to would you like to tell me about how nobody around you is good? Was that, you know, fuck me. Fucking loser. Oh my god. That's I'm mad at you now. Like I'm legitimately angry at you. I'm, I'm not, my, my bad. Yeah. Oh Jesus fucking shit. You know, it's like you try and then it's just it just <sighs> you know, what are you gonna do? I don't know. Where are we at with anything? Um what else is shit? Nothing everything else. shit. Well, not everything. I mean, no, everything's not great. I don't know. Look, this is some great dead air now. Here, why don't you why don't you rewind this and then you can just repeat what I said at the beginning of the show? Uh, no. Why? Oh my god. Oh my god. Um. Oh yeah, Dewine's being a fucking faggot. Uh, he's decided that uh, they're gonna extend the whole thing until the 29th, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's 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 incredible. Um. Yeah, like my mom still has not gotten unemployment, and it's been like five weeks. You know, uh, I straight up told her I was like, "Yeah, you're probably never getting it." Like. I think that's going to be a, the case for a lot of people. They're straight up never going to get this unemployment. Like, I'm pretty sure the coffers are up in fucking June. Like, they don't know what the fuck to do here. And we have a ridiculous amount of fucking people, you know, like applying for unemployment. None of the, the sites don't work. It's impossible to get through via phone call. A lot of these people are not going to get shit. You know, they're not going to fucking yeah, I mean see a dime. Yeah, I was just telling my friend of mine who was uh, telling me about the travails he was going through getting unemployment in New York, where uh, uh, he spent two hours. The first time he tried, he called on a Monday morning. He spent two, three hours on hold before you know they hung up on him. He called the next day. Uh, they told him he, they'd call back. Then they hung up. Yep. They didn't call back. Uh, he eventually just through calling every single day, finally got his unemployment. But it took about two weeks. Yeah, I mean, there's people, you know, seven, eight weeks uh, now been waiting for stuff. Everything just says pending, processing, or whatever the hell it is. Like, And it's like, that's depressing as shit, because it's like, you're probably not going to see a fucking dime of that. You know, and that's like several thousand dollars, you know. The amount of people that are going to lose their homes, so there's legitimately going to be people that end up homeless over this shit. Um who should be getting unemployment, you know, but it's like, you can't miss your shit. It's, I, yeah, people are going to, I mean, they're going to lose all their shit. It's I mean, you know, Andrew, Andrew england has been talking about like 50, 60% unemployment. You know, the I, government's yeah. going to have to build homeless shelters for people because there'll be so many homeless. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's going to get 50 or 60% unemployment. I could see, I can see I, I can see it hitting fifty percent unemployment, but you're gonna as soon as like basically everybody gets sick of this shit, uh, it's gonna go back. But like you're just gonna do what? Cut unemployment in half? You know? I mean, we are going to go into twenty twenty one with like a fifteen percent unemployment rate. You know? Um, and that's huge. That's terrible. You know, we were like sitting there about like four point three. 
<laughs> you know, at the beginning of the year, like 4.3 to 4.6, like I've de- insanely low unemployment rate. It was and, a good, it was a good economy for like the first time in forever. Yeah. Oh, it was the best economy that it's ever been, you know? Um, and well, yeah. maybe, not, maybe not ever, but at least during our lifetimes. Yeah. I mean, numbers wise, it was literally the best it's ever been. But that's because if you look at the numbers, it's like, I mean, we're, of course, we're doing bigger numbers than we were doing in the 50s. Um, you know, it's it just all because of uh, some bullshit, you know. Now, here's the question. I still think it was made in lab, right? But what are the odds that it was something that the U.S. and China were working on? Because we know that, that, that we were funding that Wuhan lab, right? We got, or not funding entirely, I'm sure, but like we gave them money. Who's to say this shit was not something the U.S. and China were working on? Because like, yeah, on the outward fucking thing, we have trade war or whatever. We don't like each other and all that shit. You know, everybody's still working with each other and all that shit. All it is is fucking pro wrestling. It's kayfabe. What does that mean? Uh, that's that's you know pro wrestling. You know the whole fake drama bullshit. Oh, so you just had to use a big fancy fucking dumb person word for it? That's literally the term that pro wrestlers use. Kayfabe? Kayfabe. Kayfabe? I've never heard that my entire life. Are you like a pro pro wrestling guy? Do you like pro wrestling? No, no. I mean, no, not since I was, you know, 10. Well, there you go. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't fucking... Are you a pro wrestling guy? No, but I know okay. the term because so, I've heard it used by pro wrestling guys. I win. One of my best friends is huge in this stuff. That's where I learned the term from. That's also where I learned what I so used. So you heard it. So you heard it from one guy one time, and then you decided I'm going to slip into a conversation with Bryden because he doesn't know that many big words. No, I, I think that's what used, happened. I think you I wanted actually, to sound smart. That's out. You know what I'll do? I'll just start repeating that. I'll start repeating that word. Good. I hope you enjoy it. But I didn't. I did. I thought you knew the word. No. I thought everyone knew it. No. Nobody's heard that word. I guarantee you. Nobody. In the, check the comments. Nobody's heard that fucking word. It's not a real word. I'm pretty sure it's an abbreviation for something. No. It it it's spelled K A Y F A B E. K. That's too many fucking letters for me to get. I mean, is that a fucking ticker? I'm not interested in that. It's too many. That's too many. Too many. I don't care about that word. That's a horrible word. It sounds like a pro wrestler. Do you smell what K Fabe is cooking? <laughs> well, uh, well, I just, well, I, to go back to the point. Yeah, yeah go I back mean, to I the point. Of, go I've, back to the point. I get it. You're a smart guy who knows a lot of words, Matt. You're a writer. No, I was going to, fl- I, I, talking about the American Chinese yeah, joint yeah, yeah, bioweapon thing. Like, like, I, I actually flared that idea like a couple months ago. Yeah. And here's the thing. It's like, you know, like you said, Brian, you know, there's this whole trade war bullshit. But like, and, and this is going from the other way as well. There are people who think that uh, China is like a bulwark against uh, against Zog. Here's the thing. <laughs> China is an integral China is an integral part of the world uh, economy, right. the, the world international order. You know, all those factories, you know, ended up in China with the – uh, consent of uh, TPTB. So, uh, yeah, I can I can entirely see both governments working because right now it works to both both sides benefits. Right now we right, right now we have a skyrocketing unemployment rate. Labor has never been cheaper, which is why Alexandria Ocasio Cortez is telling people to fucking protest uh, the end of lockdown by not showing up to work is so fucking stupid. Uh, people have never been more disposable. Than they are right now in the U.S. Uh, labor has never been more disposable. Uh, so, the power of international corporations has been increased dramatically. Uh, China look Ch- Ch- China benefits because again, uh, you know, China has been uh, is able to flex its power on the international stage. Uh, look good sending all these uh, semi defective uh, test kits everywhere and shit. Um, I love that they're all like. We have PPE for you. It's like you, you, you and PPE in their fucking coke, dude. Because like they're like, we sent you masks. Like there's giant holes in them, and they're like, we sell you the other part of the mask. Like, <laughs> they're terrible. 
Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I just but, wanted to dump on the. I just wanted to dunk on the fucking chinks for a second. But yeah, it's 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 too fucking convenient that both sides are getting what they want out of this. Yeah. Plus, even like the idea of like a like a war between the U.S. and China, both sides would benefit from that. You know, America would be able to conscript all these people who are now homeless and unemployed and have no prospects of uh, of a future, and China gets to rile up its fucking population, all of the surplus men. Thanks to the one child policy, or who are never going to get laid, you go die uh, in war against capitalist pig dogs to spread glorious China from sea to sea. I mean, like you got to ask yourself. It's fucking weird that basically every country across the world is doing the same thing, right? Like, yes, that's when you got to go. What the fuck is going on? Because that's, that's every weird. Every every fucking uh, every country except for like Belarus and Sweden. Yeah, I was gonna say the funniest thing is it's like Sweden's over here going, we are we are remaining neutral in this weird takeover things that you are doing. <laughs> and and the and the Belarusians were really like, uh, we just drink vodka to <laughs> to cure coronavirus. It's I mean, but yeah, some, every other country is doing China. something the same or similar, you know, and some countries are going absolutely fucking insane. Did you know that Argentina has grounded all uh, commercial flights until September? Oof. Really? Wow. Yeah, that is that is the strongest like any in the world. Most most serious lockdown. You know, you know France today is extending the state of emergency to July. Uh, you know, Ohio is extending their lockdown. Um, Italy is op- opening on Monday. Italy is going to reopen before o- Ohio does. Good for Italy, but Italy's been that way for a little while. Italy has fucking like every person that knows how to make the make it a sauce is fucking dead in Italy now. Like it's, I, I, it was a bad it was a bad flu. I think it was a man made fucking flu. I don't know. I mean, it, whether or not it, this happened on purpose or whether or not people just used it to take fucking advantage. Uh, people took advantage of this. Governments took advantage of this, 100%. Whether or not it was intention or just, you know, you never let a crisis go to waste, right? Like, yeah. you know, if it was intended or if they were just like, fuck me, like, this is a great opportunity to do all the shit that we wanted. But, uh, yeah, I mean, how's Italy doing? Did they flatten the curve or whatever? I mean, or are they just seriously all their old people it's- are dead now? I, I think that is the basically the definition of flattening the curve that they don't want to tell you. The curve is flattened when all the old people are dead. But yeah, it's like you know, even here in Albania, like they're they're finally like l- l- lessening up on the lockdown, which is makes sense because like there's what five new cases a day. Yeah, but but even then, they're like throwing in like they have to open it up in stages. They're doing this in the U.S. too. They're doing it everywhere. You know, first stage is like you know. Some small shops can reopen. Then, like the malls can reopen. Then the bars and the restaurants are the last to go. But they can't, uh, you know, have too many people in at once. So, you know, you have to respect social distancing by uh, keeping. Uh, I think in Florida, you know, they they uh, are are doing the same thing with regards to social distancing in restaurants. Like, yeah, everyone has to be this far apart. Uh, how many restaurants can stay profitable if they can only have a capa- if their capacity is cut in half or or cut by two thirds? I... Amazon will buy it up. Don't worry. <laughs> Amazon will buy Amazon, it up. Amazon, Amazon diners. Yeah, yeah. Why not? You know. No, can... wait. They'll, they'll they'll rebrand it to Whole Foods diners because they own Whole Foods. Exactly. Yeah. Which you know, to be fair, does sound pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, Whole Foods isn't terrible. I love Whole Foods. It's just like you know. You go into whole paycheck, you buy three things, and you know she's like, "Fuck, I, just, I didn't know I needed a hundred dollar fucking mozzarella sticks and shit." But you know it is what it is. But uh, you know they give you that five uh, percent discount if you're an Amazon Prime member, right? I I, I I'm loving that idea that like uh, you're gonna end up uh, having to go. Uh, oh yeah, I'm like a City 17 member, uh, so I get a discount here. You know, <laughs> like I, I mean, I'm, it's gonna get that bad. It's gonna get that fucking bad uh, eventually. I mean, we're gonna be dead, but like it'll eventually get that bad. You're gonna have to like uh, just subscribe to you know living in a city. Like you're not gonna rent an apartment anymore. You're gonna live in a city. You know, uh, and you that's where all of your you're basically gonna live in a mall. 
Um, they're going to put a chip in your fucking nose. And, uh, I mean, that's it. Like, that's where it is. That's where it is. You're going to live, you're, you're going to live in a capsule. You won't own anything. Not even yep. the mat that you sleep on. Yep. Uh, all the books are going to be burned. Everything will be digitized. Uh, I'm on board with and you'll work and, you, and you'll work and you'll work some gig economy job until you drop dead at age 55. I mean, you, 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 yes. Which is like, um, you know, I mean, you got to ask yourself, are the antenatal people that fucking bad? Antinatalism? You're, you're into that now? I mean, I'm not into that now, but like, you know, what type of fucking selfish bullshit is it? They're like, I need to have a child to propagate my fucking what? To just be a slave? Do you know what's coming in like 40 years? You know what's coming. You're going to get to see it start to happen. And then you're going to drop dead. So who gives a shit? You know, but realistically, yeah. it will probably collapse before it gets to that stage. They'll try to implement it, and then society will just collapse entirely. Why would it collapse? Because be, because because people are being pushed to the breaking point. Who cares? Or, 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 get new, or, just get more people. Get 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 people that are used to that. You'll just get more people. It doesn't matter if people are being pushed to the breaking point. You'll just get more. If you're the guy at the top, you'll just get more people. This is Sim City, my dude. You will just get more people. It's fine. Revolts against fucking, you know. What are they I gonna mean, do? What are you gonna do? Revolt against? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna, are you gonna go revolt? No, everybody's scared of dying. You're not gonna revolt against shit. You won't revolt. It's fine. You will westernize everybody. You will infect them with this whole fucking idea, uh, slowly of like, look, everything's fine, and then, you know, you take you pull the rug out from under them. And then you go, see, that sucks. Now you have to do this. And then what are they going to do? They're not going to revolt. Nobody's ever going to revolt. This fucking idea, like this Michigan bullshit, that's a LARP. That's a fucking LARP, dude. You pull the real rug out from everybody. You make them hungry and shit, they're not going to do shit. Make them hungry? Dude, like, like, fucking revolutions have been launched over the price of bread. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, great. They don't do that anymore. They did it in Egypt less uh, less than a decade ago. Great. They're not going to do that here. They weren't westernized to the point that, you know, they had the internet and shit like that. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I, I see, I get where you're coming from, but I think you're being too pessimistic. Why would I be optimistic about people? People have done nothing but consistently let me down my entire life. I don't no believe in people. I think people are fucking kind of shitty and like, I don't blame them. You know, all we want to do is be fat and happy. You know, you pull the rug out from under them and you go, this sucks. But what you do is like through the internet and like through just kind of general westernization and shit like that. Um, you feed them shit. They go, it is good. I mean, we're talking like 1984 shit. It is, you know, by skipping a meal, you're helping, you know, in some great fight against something or whatever. How long until they tell us about the fucking aliens? And then they go, they're our enemy. They're not really. Well, I mean, they've already... been trading with them forever or some bullshit. And then you just welcome to City 17, bitch. Well, I mean, they already did that with the UFOs earlier this week. They just confirmed old footage. That shit's been out there since like 2018. They just said, yeah, that's like a real thing. Well, they're laying the groundwork for like aliens or some shit. Oh, yeah. Aliens are fucking out there. We've been communicating with them for fucking probably since the 60s. You know, um, I know that sounds crazy, but like, fuck you. I was right about coronavirus, so you know if you think I'm wrong, like, have fun with the fucking alien shit. You know, shows up. I yeah. Also, ghosts are real, so there you go. Uh, you know, I don't. They're they're not like you're not gonna become one. They are interdimensional fucking beings. Also, demons aren't real either. They're just interdimensional fucking beings. Uh, you. You you just die, <laughs> like you just die. Nothing really happens to you. Um, you're unimportant, and you've never been important. Your entire life's a lie. All right, you just die. But uh, you know everything else is like other shit going on, and those things probably die too. You know, uh, but it's Bound, boundless optimism from Bryden today. Well, what do you want me to say? You know, like oh yeah, Alex Jones is wrong. You know, like I, you give me a break. No, no, keep no, keep saying this. It's good content. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just commenting on your commentary. Well, it's just true. I, I mean, or, or if it's not true, it's kind of true. You know, 
Like, I mean, I'm sorry if you think that your life is somehow fucking important or anything like that, but it's not. It's it's literally not. You just die, and, uh, you know, you die twice. You die when you die, and then you die the last time your name is spoken, and um, that probably won't take too long. You will um, live on in the things that you posted on the Internet, but, like, even that's going to go away, buddy. You, you're you're going to die, you know. Um, wait, 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 wait. Uh, you die the last time uh, when you're you're la- the last time your name is spoken. Right. Let's say let's say the last time your name is spoken, and then twenty years ago, later someone speaks your name again. Is that like resurrection? No, that's just not the last time your name is spoken. Okay, okay. Do you know what last means? Head. What the fuck? <laughs> I was just trying. I was just trying to wrap my head around this uh, this uh, this concept. Because I'm like an internet, Like assuming time goes on forever, like. It doesn't. Like science, scientists have said this shit. Um, everything that can happen will happen. So yeah. there is no last. Well, that's not true. Time is um, a flat fucking circle. Go on. Well, time is a flat fucking circle. I mean, you are um, when you die, as far as I can tell from doing copious amounts of drugs is that your ether goes into you split into the bad part and the good part of like the good things you've done and the bad things that you've done and the good things that you are and the bad things that you are and both are equal because like really what are fucking morals to begin with um and you that energy goes out there like positive and negative fucking energy like good feelings and bad feelings that just goes out there time is a fucking flat circle you uh, everything that has happened has it will happen again and everything that has already happened you know it, it, like it's all it's it's all interconnected like it all every in the future everything that's going to happen has already fucking happened um so so like you know with regards to the the good things and the bad things like like narcissism or is it or is it cathars i don't know what that means i i, I it was either the gnostics or the cathars who believed that shit I, I don't know what that means. I, I mean, I just know that um, that's what I got from some of my trips, and that's what it feels like is probably what really happens to you. Because, like, I, I mean, I, we, I mean, we could go into like a whole fucking moral relativism bullshit about like you know, you know, like we could start with like eating a dog or whatever, and you could get into like some really fucked up areas that I don't want to have myself being said on the podcast about about like what is right and wrong and all of you, you know. Um, I know what is right to me, um, but like, it's more about, you know, did you do positive things like create positive feelings or did you create negative feelings? And if you create negative feelings, that is your bad energy that just goes out there, which is just as important. Um, because you don't have fucking good without bad. You don't have bad without good. Um, the rule that I try to live by is, um, uh, if you do good, you'll feel great. If you do bad, you'll feel sad. So utilitarianism? I mean, I guess. Whatever. I don't have to put an ism. I don't have to do a thing. Like, I just talk to people about fucking politics, you know, or make jokes or whatever. I don't I don't, I don't. put an ism thing on it. It's probably already a thing, for sure. Um, but it, 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 utilitarianism, fine. Whatever you want to call it. I mean, I'm just not smart enough to, you know, put a thing on it or, like, write a book about it or whatever. No, I just, I just, I just find this whole, you know, your, your, your viewpoints are interesting. You know, it's like, well, no, I appreciate that. Connect these back to right. my, to my, to my knowledge of uh, philosophy. Right, like I said, I mean, it's probably a thing. Like when I read Nietzsche, I was like, oh, this is shit I already fucking knew. Like this is already shit that I fucking believed, and I was like, what a faggot, you know. So I'm sure there's already an ism. There's already a thing. Some smart, quote unquote, smart people have already fucking done that. I think life is very, very basic. Uh, I think basically probably 99.9% of your life is uh, just kind of um, instinct. You know, whatever you're doing, whatever you're going to be, whatever is like instinct. Um, You know, which sucks for especially for like a guy like me who's fucking nothing, you know. So like everything that I do is just in my nature to do that. Um, And it sucks, but whatever. I mean, I get drunk every day. It's fun. Um yeah, I don't even get drunk every day anymore. I get, I, I get too hungover. So I gotta do like three times a week. I get fucking drunk and I'm an attention whore and all of that, you know, but that's in my fucking nature to do that. 
there's really not much i don't really have that much say in what the decisions i would make or like the things that i do um nor do i think anybody does uh, it's just that's you you're running on fucking instinct i mean the idea that you uh feel that you have any type of control or meaning is kind of lost on me um it uh well it's not lost on me like i can kind of understand why people would want to feel that way but it's more like that is kind of what they would you know that's just their nature to like have to require meaning and a lot of them do grow up. I mean, like I've gone through so many phases in like trying to find meaning in my life or like understand uh, things or like, you know, understand God or something like that. I'm not saying God doesn't exist. Uh, I'm just saying the Pope's not talking to that motherfucker, you know? Um, yeah. It's, it's, you know, the Pope's not talking to him. Even by their own rules, he's not, you know, it's just that's that's a weird thing, but it, it keeps people sane. Um. But, like, you're just running on your fucking instinct. Like, you really have very little control over what you do. Uh, that's just who you are, right? Um, and some of us are cooler than others and better than others at things. Uh, and then it's like, you know, you get the whole moral issue and stuff. I mean, I'm not excusing immoral people or anything like that. But it's like, you can look at somebody and go, well, he's crazy, right? That's yeah. just in his nature to... To, to do immoral things you know you, you look at the crazy eyes and stuff and you go like that guy's just fucking fucked from the beginning right um but i mean ultimately like in the end like it uh you know you you don't really have that much free will you're not really doing uh you're not doing anything you're not supposed to do and you're you know you're fucked you're just gonna die you know it's it's a really cruel and weird uh thing you know, being conscious. Um, but it's cool too. You know, you ought to just be happy that you get to experience it, but just know that you're really not the one in charge. Well, I mean, this is why, I mean, since you mentioned anti-natalism earlier, this is why anti-natalists view like right, life itself as being just kind of cool. Like you bring, you bring, you bring life into this world just to watch it die. Well, you bring life into this world because you're scared of your own death, you know, and you want to have some type of a legacy. Um, cause like we can't all be Caesar. Right. So we like have a kid, yeah. you know, and, um, that's, I, I, I don't know if I'm gonna have a kid or not, you know, uh, this is, I, I don't know. I really lean towards not, um, just because of, I'm, I'm quite selfish. And also I do fear for the, for the future, uh, of like, Oh yeah, just pop a kid out. And you're like, what's he going to do? Be a slave to the fucking Chinese. Great. You know? Uh, you know, he'll probably cut his dick off. <laughs> like, yeah, like, oh, cool. <laughs> I do. I do remember reading some trad Catholic years ago who didn't want to have more kids because uh, he was just afraid he'd end up increased. As he put it, uh, I'd be increasing the number of reprobate souls. Hmm. Okay. I mean, that's a that's a pretty dark way of looking at it, but. Well, I mean, oh, like, uh, I, I get a... I get the mentality. Who has a fucking positive view of the future right now? Like our whole generation has a pretty negative view of the future. We grew up with 9-11, the 2008 recession, and the now this bullshit. You know, it's uh, the, like, come on. You know, nobody in our generation, uh, the millennial generation, who gets more shit than we fucking should. We get shit from the boomers who are calling us fucking horrible, dumb retards. And I'm like trying to say like, those, those are the fucking Gen Z guys. Come on, stop it. We're, you know, we're 30 something We some of us, many of us have kids and businesses and stuff, you know, leave us alone. And then the fucking younger generation looks at us and goes 30 year old boomer. Fuck you. You know, like at least fucking Gen X got like a pass, you know, they're just like, oh, MTV was cool. And like now they're retiring. You know, we get, we get shit. We get fucking shit constantly. And we had a tough run of things. They, we get made fun of for avocado toast. I deserve some avocado toast, all right? Because nobody is ever going to let me buy a fucking house. Like, I'm trying so hard. I've been trying and what so the fuck hard. Is wrong with, and what the fuck is wrong with avocado toast? Avocado toast is delicious. I love avocado toast. You can put a poached egg on there with some tomatoes and shit. They're all in fucking rye. Oh, I love it. But, you know, like... You know, it's bullshit. Like, I've been trying so hard. This is, I had a breakdown on DLive, and I know I broke down to you about this shit. I've been trying so hard the past couple of years to, like, fucking not be a, you know, kid anymore and, like, 
accumulate wealth and like do the whole thing. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking buy a house. I would like to have a boat someday. You know, like I want to, you know, that's, so I wanted a boat for a year, dude, because I want to hit golf balls into the fucking Florida ocean. But like, you know, and then shit like this happens, you know, and they're just like, oopsie daisy, fuck you. And it sucks, man. Like it's, it just, suicide seems like the only fucking option for everyone now at this point. Like the only thing you can do is just spend all your money and die. Like do a bunch of cocaine and die because it's like, who gives a shit? The, 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 we fucking rode this great wave of this great economy recently. And then now it's just fucking kill yourself at this point. Spend all your money and die. That's the only advice that I could give to anybody. Spend all your money on drugs and die because it's, it's fucked. You're done. It's done. We are the, the generation that got shit on more than anybody by the world. All right. It wasn't really anybody's fault, but like the, the bullshit that we have to hear from all these other people is crap. Like, everybody just says, fucking millennials. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you. How's that? How about you deal with what we've had to deal with? Which is basically, like, horrible economy, horrible economy. Oh, my God, the economy's good. Fuck you again. You know, you can't, You, you what are you going to do? Start a fucking gravel company? Great. Many people did that. And th- that guess what happened to them? Their gravel company doesn't exist now. You know, it's... I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely just, like, stressing out over the whole thing, as you could probably tell. But, like, it doesn't... I don't know. It doesn't make it better or worse with my fucking view on... I'm glad we went through my my whole view on on life. Uh, I wish the D-Life people would listen to that and then never ask me about God again. But um, I don't think I'm wrong, Matt. I think that, like, whatever you believe, I think... Our generation has been fucking horribly yeah, got a bad yeah. rat, got a bad fucking run. Is a bad hand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, 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 I personally dispute the whole suicide thing. Well, my personal view on it is I'm I don't want to die. Suicide thing. I'm joking with the suicide thing. It's a joke. It's I'm being. I mean, well, I'm my, a my, histrionic well, Irishman. What do you want from me? Well, my well my, my my commentary was like I don't want to die until I've you know you know there are things I still want to do. And there are people I want to see uh, I, crushed. There, like, I want, I want to outlive my enemies. Yeah. You know, as, as the quote goes, if you sit, uh, if you sit patiently on the side of a river, a river, eventually you will see the bodies of your enemies float by. I want to be that guy. I know I'm going to be that guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna outlive and outlast everyone. I mean, that's great. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I get that. I understand that completely, but. Like, what's even the fucking point? I just derive a satisfaction from it. Yeah, but they won't know that you won. I I don't care if they know it. I just need to know it. That okay. that's what makes me happy. Yeah, but then you'll just die. So it doesn't matter. Like, I mean, I could go today, and it doesn't matter. There's people that I hate. You know, like I have a real like venom and hatred towards. And like, I I'm good about just not even fucking dealing with them but because you know i mean what is it It, it, being successful is the fucking best revenge you know just living a better fucking life is is better and i live a better life than all of my enemies well that's the thing you know i i can't live a better life if i'm dead exactly i mean so it doesn't matter i mean like i said i I could die now and who gives a shit it, it doesn't matter. Like, it's not... Once you're gone, you're gone. It doesn't matter. And if you believe in some afterlife or whatever, then you get to go do that. You know, you get to go do that. And they don't. So, fuck them. Like, like I don't I don't believe in the fucking slave mentality shit. I'm glad that I read something that finally put a, a, a words to it. You know, like, oh, if I'm good and wholesome in this, then, like, that's... That, that butthole, he'll, he'll be punished later. Nah. I mean... And this is, I, I, I separate from Nietzsche on, uh, on all of this because he didn't really like nihilism as much. Um, I, I, like, I don't see what's wrong with nihilism. Uh, like, literally nothing matters. Like, you're you're probably living in some well, type I mean, of simulation. I, I, you're honest to God probably living in some type of simulation. So, well, my, 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 well, my perspective, like, years ago was that, like, you know, if you, if, you re- if you reject the existence of God, then nihilism is the only thing that makes sense. I don't reject the existence of God. I don't. I definitely uh, know there's a god. Uh, well, I, 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 wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't talking about you. 
you specifically, I'm talking about like, you know, just other people. Right, but you're wrong. I mean, I don't reject the existence of God, but like, um, God is so probably uncaring and not even aware that you're a thing. You know, it's uh, it's just like, oh fuck, there's a you know guy, uh, doesn't care, doesn't care. It's just like, like if you made if you made like if you were just watching a bunch of ants, right, and one of them died, you'd be like, ah oh, shit, but it would not affect you in any way. That times a fucking billion, you know. Like, when you, you know, you, you try to let a spider out of your house, right? But, like, if he dies, then he dies. You know, indifferent. Totally fucking indifferent. Because, like, if something was that magnificent, why would he love each and every fucking one of you? Some of us are assholes. <laughs> like, you know, like, just, you know, all moral relativism aside, some of us are major fucking assholes. Like, it's, you know, I mean, I mean, I hate to like, I don't know, whatever the fucking people will get. I mean, you know, about God, it, but... you know, I mean, this is getting a bit too metaphysical. Maybe we should shut the podcast. Too. Like, if God is in, has infinite power, then he also has infinite mercy. Why? Why would he have infinite mercy? Because he's all powerful. Great. Just because you're capable of something doesn't mean you do it. I'm capable of beating the shit out of Erica. I don't fucking do it. Well, you're you're thinking from a very, you're thinking from a very limited perspective. No, you're thinking of a ridiculous perspective that just because somebody is capable of infinite mercy, doesn't mean that they would exercise such a thing. I don't know, man. You'd be surprised. Uh, well, I would be surprised because I'd be like, "Holy shit, God, what's up? Fuck! I was questioning your existence my entire life. How are you? You know? Yeah, I would be surprised." You know, I, it just, I don't know, just the whole thing. I, look, I, and like, I don't mean to piss off. I, listen, I like the rise of Catholicism in, among the right wing. I think it's great. Um, I don't like the Twitter Catholics. I think that's annoying. Um, but like, I, I, I think it's good that people are finding religion and finding purpose, you know, and giving them a reason to like do good shit, right? Because if you do bad, you'll feel sad. If you do good, you'll feel great. I don't care what the reason behind it is. You know, because I'm not you. That's between you and God. That's something you got to figure out on your own. I don't. I don't. I don't care. I am happy that people are finding religion because it's it beats them finding like weird paganism or like larpy bullshit. Because at least people believe in Catholicism. You know, it's not like some weird esoteric Hitlerism occult bullshit about uh, uh, Gartha or what the fuck ever. You know, that shit's dumb. You don't believe that. I know you don't believe it. You know you don't believe it. But, like, Catholicism, that is the thing people believe. You know, I, I, I'm I on board. I think if anybody has it right, it's probably the Catholics. But guess what? Might be Islam. I don't know. You know, it's it's, it's not my call to make. But whatever's going to make you, like, a good guy instead of a bad guy, I'm fucking on board with, man. As long as you're nice to me. I don't care. Like, my view is you're going to fucking die and it's never going to matter that you ever existed. But do good shit while you're here, man. And like, I try my best to just be a fucking, you know, good dude. I've, I've done horrible things in the past. I have this horrible habit of fucking with people, you know? And, um, as I've gotten older, I've realized. Not exhibit, a, exhibit A, this podcast. Yeah. I mean, you know, but like, as I've gotten older, I've, I've, I've realized I shouldn't do that to anybody except Matt, you know, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> You know, and then they're going as part of a bit. Yeah, you know, I mean, like Matt and I are really good friends, but it's like, I don't know, whatever's gonna make people fucking happy. So, like, I'm not trying to piss off with the fucking Catholics or anything like that by saying like the only cool thing the Pope ever did was say that whiskey is also holy water because that that sounds like my type of guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, did you hear about that? Well, no, I didn't. Oh yeah, he said whiskey's holy water, so. That fucking Google it, it kicks ass. Um, good for him. I'm on board with it. I, I can get behind. I can get behind that. Yeah. So I don't know. We're about one minute twenty three. Uh, what one minute? One hour twenty three minutes in. Um, I want to keep talking to you. I think we should do this That's off good. of uh, off of the podcast, yeah, yeah. which means you nerds will. It's, it's, it's gonna be a show. Right? Yeah, yeah. You, you nerds definitely. will never. Uh, you'll Nerd. never hear. You'll never hear what we fucking talk about. So deal with that. You dweebs 
All right, dude, uh, do, all right, here, I'll do my plug thing. Long as she loves it's going to eat away. It's going to eat away at you, not knowing. Yeah. Until I, you know, until you go over to dlive.tv slash Bryden, and I just probably spend a bunch of hours telling you about that, watch an episode of Cops, and then complain to you about, like, some stock, penny stock that I've been fucking looking at. Um, but yeah, dlive.tv slash yeah, yeah. Bryden, that's it. Yeah, that's the plugs. I'm going to get the news segment out of the way quickly. Um, I'm going to go pee while you do it. Uh, in a couple of weeks. Okay, cool. Um, in a couple of weeks, uh, we're going to be releasing uh, into the, into, Under the Nye Hill by uh, Andy Nowicki. That's Terror House's next book. It's a short little novella, actually, about a lot of the stuff we've just been discussing. Uh, meaning, purpose, inhibition. The plot is a, a failed Catholic seminary student uh, has a nervous breakdown, and he's chosen to participate in a drug trial for a drug that removes all inhibitions, that makes people as fearless and, and crazy as Islamic suicide bombers. That's what the novel's about. Andy Nowicki, a lot of you read The Columbine Pilgrim, which we published in January. It's a great book. This is a great book. And it'll be out on May 15th. The next episode, we will be having Andy Nowicki on as the guest. Andy Nowicki on as the guest. And he, to talk about the book, to talk about all kinds of other stuff. And again, he's already been on the show before back in uh, back in December. So yeah, uh, Under the Nihil is coming on May 15th. And as for me, you know, you already know where to find Brian, but you can find me at uh, mattforney.com. There's my Telegram, YouTube, uh, DLive, all the, all the other stuff. And that'll do it for this episode of Terror House Radio. Be sure to check in every day at Terror House Magazine, terrorhousemag.com. For our latest publications, check out our books at Terror House Press at terrorhousepress.com. Follow our social media links in the description. And don't forget that you can always check out past episodes of Terror House Radio at terrorhouseradio.com. Terror House Radio is produced by Bryden Proctor and presented by Jugs. Intro music by Meme Extremist. Illegitimate on Coverundum. Don't the bastards grind you down. I'm Matt Forney with Bryden Proctor and we are out.